Now Yusuf alayhi salam, you know, Yaqub alayhi salam does not know that Yusuf alayhi salam is a prophet. Not yet. Not when this conversation began. He doesn't know that. After listening to his dream, when he comes to Yaqub alayhi salam, where he analyzes what this child is saying, how intelligently he's saying it, and then he makes a comment. That's how Allah has chosen you. So he sees something special in this dream. But that's after he told him the dream, not before. And actually, he didn't even finish the dream. He stopped at, I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon, which is what you consider in Arabic, you know, a, a, a complete sentence. It's a complete sentence. I saw the stars. I saw the moon. That's cool. Now I'm going to go back to my work, the father would say. No, actually, tell me a little more. Even though the sentence is complete, I think you wanted to say more. What else? What? So you saw 11 stars, sun and moon. Did anything happen? What else, what else happened? It's like the father encouraged him to speak out more. This is the key that I want to highlight when I talk about communication. For myself and for all of you. Fathers in particular, mothers goes without saying. Mothers it goes without saying. But fathers in particular, because it doesn't come naturally to us, we have to communicate with our children a lot. And that begins with us being good listeners. We learn that from the sunnah of Yaqub alayhi salam. Listening to our children. Fathers in particular, and unlike women, men in particular have attention span disorder. We can only pay attention to one thing at one time. One thing at one time. If I'm reading an email, I can't listen to somebody talk. I have to put it away. Okay, now say it again. Okay, okay, I gotcha. I cannot multitask. Women can multitask any day of the week. They could be cooking with one hand, on the phone with the other, you know, you know, uh, putting a child to sleep with the, the foot or something. They, they, could, they could do all of that and still pay. And then two kids are talking in the back while she's on the phone and this and that and the other. And like, hey, I know what you said. Say sorry. <laughs> like, they can do that. Men can't do that. But you know what? You don't have to become multitaskers. What you have to learn to do and what I have to learn to do is listen to one child at a time. If all, because all you kids come and talk to you at once. They all come and just, ah, blah, 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 and there's like, ah, I don't know what to do with you people. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hug you and let you go. Now go and live your life. <laughs> Actually take one child. Okay, wait, wait, I, I won't talk to everybody. But right now it's Waleed's turn. Okay, Waleed, what you gotta say? And the other ones are getting impatient. My turn, my turn, my turn. Just wait, 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 let him finish. And the child feels like they got their attention. They got their time. And you actually listen. You don't just listen for the sake of listening. You listen and respond and, you know, acknowledge. And then these are important validations for kids, right? And then move on to the next child and the next child. That little bit of conversation, you will not believe how attached your child will become to you because you engage them in conversation, because you showed interest in even the most minuscule to you, the most pathetic things. They're pathetic to you, but they're the, it's the world for that kid. When a child just makes an art project, it's the most important thing to them. That's like their whole world. You can't just diminish that. 